Well, you can see I have my uh, rear grip and my reel seat glued on with the expanding glue and you may use the tape method if you choose or the split rear grip method um, and you can also see that I remember to put my hood back on my real hood before I put the cork foregrip on And I'm going to try to move the camera about slowly, being as I'm holding it by hand. And as you can see in this area, I have absolutely no exposed glue and, and no exposed glue here. But had I made a mistake or had I had a gap right here because of the difference in rod size and reel seat size, I would have just painted the glue right here with a standard Sharpie. I'd have painted it black. And I'll illustrate right here on the front. And you can see the front, and it doesn't matter there because no one's going to see that. But as you can see, and you can mark that black. And you can't see where the real seat ends and the and the black marker begins. I'll do a little bit more just for illustration. And as my old granddad used to tell me, a good craftsman is not one that never makes a mistake but one that knows how to fix the mistakes he makes. So you can see how that glue quite easily took that marker. And I've done this on rods that are probably 25 years old now and uh, that indelible ink is still on there. So uh, I'm going to lay my rod out, and I've actually already laid it out for the decorative wrap. It's on uh, one inch intervals on one side. Let's see. Here, 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 and so on. And I actually have it run out much farther than what I'm going to make the wrap. I mean, uh, the intervals are actually two inches on both sides, but one side starts at one inch, the other side starts at two inches. Anyway, when I start laying it out, I'm going to have start with two inches here, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and so on. And on the other side, it's going to be one, three, five, seven nine and so on and uh, I'm just gonna make a diamond wrap on this um, rod and I've already got my foregrip sized and as you can see it here's my mark at four inches in the foregrip it is like just a little over three and a half and so that makes my first diamond on the top start right where it comes out of the foregrip anyway with my rod laid out I can start with my first pass up and back and get the center of my diamond laid out And getting your diamond straight right at the start is very important because if it's not straight to start with, it won't be straight when you finish. So for the first several passes uh, with our thread, we're going to put a lot of effort into making sure that our pattern is laid out straight. And also on my foregrip, 
you can see that I've already reamed it larger than the than the rod blank at this point because I want it to slide over my wrap and this is going to cover this end of the wrap. Okay, so I'm going to make my first band up and back. It's going to be white and I'll make that about five threads thick. I'm going to start my band of white just like you would starting anything else. Get a thread over it and get a few passes. And then there it is. Now because this is going to be a crappie rod, I started by putting a band of red it's exactly 10 inches from the start of the foregrip to the start of the red band. So I can measure my fish and know that they're legal just by holding it up right here. If I'm wondering whether the fish is big enough or not. So uh, and this is a rod wrapper. This is uh, a Rossetti rod wrapper. It's kind of pricey but I like it it makes things a lot easier so I'm gonna start off there's my first one inch mark there's my second now I'm saying one inch they're two inches apart on each side there but there's one and then two and then three and then four Anyway, that makes my diamonds all an inch apart, center to center. And that seems to, to work well for me. And I'm not worrying about getting it exact right now. I'm just kind of getting a ballpark. And I will get it exact after I've gone around the rod a couple times. Or up and down at least once. Now this band of red is covering up my mark on the 10 inch mark. Alright, and I can't see well so I have to move the light and everything as I go. And just keep adjusting. And I'm not going to make this wrap come out this far. It's going to stop somewhere in here. But you always go beyond where you're figuring on it ending. Otherwise, you won't have a clean ending on your wrap. So I've come out here to the end, and I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape on my last mark. And generally I'm using half inch wide masking tape, but I must have used it for something else. So I can't find it, so I've got this quarter inch masking tape, so I'm going to make several trips around the rod. And I realize my masking tape is kind of a big ugly mess right here, and I intend it to be. That's going to be what holds my thread as I turn around and go back down the rod. I'll make me a couple of passes here to hold it and then turn around and start back down. Here is my first mark. And I've got the machine cinched down pretty tight right now to hold everything until I get it laid out. All right, so there's one, there's the other one, there's another one. And remember I said I'm going to come back and straighten this all here in a minute. I 
I just kind of want it ballpark right for now. come up to the end and I'm just going to roll it around several times to hold it uh, so I'm going to take my machinist ruler lay on here and make sure my marks are my thread crosses on the proper inch mark and of course it doesn't because this is my first pass so it's just part of laying it out and out here on the end I'm not going to be as concerned with it being just right because Remember, it's going to stop somewhere along in here. I'm going to rotate my rod 180 degrees and do that again on my next set of marks. And nothing will make a custom thread wrap look poor like having your initial layout crooked. So we're taking extra time to be sure we're straight. Now I'm going to take a piece of contrasting color thread. So in this case it's red. So I can easily see it against the black background. I'm going to lay it. See, now I've run it under a thread down here just to hold it in place. And I'm going to lay it right down the middle of that rod and make sure that these crosses cross right smack in the middle. So this one's off just a hair. And just a hair is too much for me. I want it to be right on there. Now other people may have easier ways of doing this. But for me, a tight line seems to give me the best results. And those are centered. And I'm going to take my ruler and check it again for distance now that I've moved them all. And this one here on nine inches has moved a little bit. So I'm checking for distance between the, where the thread crosses, and I'm checking for straight. 
for those crosses to be absolutely straight. And so typically if you adjust the distance that affects the cross not being straight and if you adjust the cross that affects the distance to not being right. So I'm going to go back and forth just several times until I have it right where I want it. And you'll notice that each time you, you measure everything and check everything for straight, you'll have it all lined up a little bit better each time. And what I did was I didn't have it just right down here on this end, and that made these lower ends off a little bit. And the further towards the tip I go, they're not off as much. So I've got to straighten these out and do it one more time. Okay, let me check my distance. I actually made a rookie mistake. <clears throat> I was leaving the weight of my arm setting on the rod blank, which was bowing the rod and making my layout not straight. liking that pretty well on that side. I'm going to get me another piece of red thread. Rotate the rod 180 degrees and do it on the other side. So typically your wrap, your decorative wraps are going to be 180 degrees apart. Now <clears throat> once you get just pretty darn good at it you can do a double wrap and they'll be 90 degrees apart so you'll have a either a chevron or a diamond every 90 degrees around the rod instead of every 180 but it generally takes a little while to to progress to that point and as you can see, these are just way off. So I'm going to pull them down kind of straight, and then I'll go back and 
alter the distance between the diamonds. Well, as you can see, I've got my diamonds lined up pretty good. There's one side, and let's rotate it 180 degrees to the other side. And there it is. There's my 10 inch mark from the real seat to 10 inches and uh, truthfully I usually don't have these uh, contrasting threads attached I just hold it out between two hands like this but I needed to be able to do it this way to demonstrate uh, so I can have at least one free hand okay so now I'm going to go up and back the rod again and each time I go up and down the rod, I'm going to go on this side of the first one, on the butt side, and then the second wrap, I'm going to go on the tip side. So, so I keep alternating back and forth, and that's what actually forms your diamond. And I, I'll check it as I go and make sure I keep everything nice and straight. So, I'm going to start with the butt side. And so you might ask, do I ever mess up? Get two or three threads into it and find out I've got a mistake and have to start all over? Well, yes, I do. Um, a lot more often when I was new at it. A lot less often now. Actually, hadn't had to in a long time. But it does still happen. Alright, so as you can see, as I'm going up the rod... I'm making sure the line, the thread stays tight in my diamond because when I finish, I want to finish with a nice tight diamond. Now, many years ago, there was someone out there that did some videos, and that would have been, that would have been 30 years ago. Uh, before you could YouTube stuff. Uh, and he advocated doing a loose wrap and then you would straighten it all out just before you put the finish on. The epoxy. And that might work for some, but I, I couldn't make it work for me. I, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but when I made a loose wrap, I finished up with a loose, ugly wrap. Okay, so I get up here to my tape, and I just make two or three trips around the rod blank. And you'll see that tape forming a little point right here, and I'm going to start back down. <clears throat> and I'm going to pay attention that I'm on the butt side of the thread as I start back down. And you can see me tighten it up there. Uh, 
All right, so I've made it down to my real seat. And so <clears throat> I'm gonna check my threads, make sure they're still straight. That's pretty much straight there. Now I have a little gap here. And you want to use your burnishing tool more than your hand, uh, especially working with white thread. Because even though your hands may look clean, everything shows on white. So that looks pretty good there. Let me get my machinist ruler out. And I I use my machinist ruler because it's it's laid out in 64 of an inch. It's easier to make sure everything's just real right on the spot, right on the money. And that side was straight so I'm going to pull this thread out and discard it and rotate the rod around to the top and just for reference we'll call this axis the zero axis so we know where we're at I'm going to stretch this one out. And I'm nice and straight. Now, I know that this top one isn't straight right here, but remember we're going this end somewhere in here. We just go up this far to keep our thread uh, wrap good and straight. And let's see. Couple of these need touching up just a little bit. And some people can make several runs without touching them up, but I cannot. So. I've got this one off just a very small amount and when I said I use that machinist ruler because it's laid out in 64 of an inch less than 64 of an inch off on straight will make it look really crooked And this being the zero axis is the part that's up on top and fishermen will be able to see it all the time we really want it straight <clears throat> all right so now I'll get rid of this thread and discard it and uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna make another pass up and down the rod with my right but this time I'm gonna pass by on the tip side of my diamond remember the last pass was on the butt side so that we form a nice diamond
Now, I, I usually don't sit down and just do a wrap all at one time. And I won't this time either. Generally, I'm going to come out and put on several threads a day. But like I said, it's for me, it's just a hobby. And granted, it's a hobby that pays very well when I'm selling rods. But it is just a hobby. I couldn't put this kind of time into this if I was having to depend on this as my main source of income. breaking my own rule and using my finger on white thread which I should not Alright, so there's another cycle up and down the rod blank. And as I was rolling it around, I could easily see my diamond not very tight right here. And this where you need two burnishing tools and you just kind of bring them together like that. And you'll notice your diamond beginning to form immediately. Now while this is just three wraps, if you look closely you can actually see the diamond. And um, on the next wrap I will try to get the camera in closer so that it can be seen. Well now this is going to be the fifth and final pass of the white thread that is beginning our diamond, uh, the center of our diamond. And while I, I took a lot of uh, preparation in getting the diamond just right to start with, once you get it started well, it'll go pretty quickly from there on out. And just about anything you do as far as a, a, a decorative wrap on the end will either be a diamond or a chevron or a combination of the two. Even the fish patterns I do are a combination of diamonds and chevrons. Uh, and I, I had been asked to do this as a fish pattern, but I didn't really want that for this rod. Uh, it takes a lot longer to wrap a fish pattern because all the space in between the fish, once you've made your fish, you've, you've got to continue with a chevron that, continue, that covers all of this black space in between or the 
fish is not easily available. People look at and say, where's the pattern? And then you have to say, well, you see it right here. So to prevent that, you, I usually use a blue background around fish so that you can see the pattern. Well, that just takes a lot longer. And these days it's difficult for me to sit in the, in the rod wrapping chair that long because I'm kind of leaning over a little bit. And it's just difficult for me because of my age. So anyway, I'm going to start with a final pass, which is actually on the tip side of the diamond. And when I get done, I'll take the camera out of its case and get some close-up shots of it. And I'll probably loosen up my thread carriage a bit when I get done with this particular part. And as you can see, I'm, I'm moving down a lot quicker than I was before. Another thing I usually do before I start wrapping the rods with a decorative wrap is I mark where all of my guides are going to be. And I've done that on this one. This being a base uh, bait casting rod, the first guide from the reel is going to be approximately 24 inches from the front of the reel. <clears throat> And I have a mark there at approximately 24 inches, but I've also marked all the rest of them. And a lot of manufacturers, you can go to their website and they actually tell the guide spacing for different rod blanks. Um, I started out having learned from Del Clements you you tape the guides on the rod and put a reel in the reel seat and run your line through the guides and then bend the rod the opposite direction of the guides and you make sure the line doesn't touch the rod blank anywhere anywhere that it touches the rod blank that is going to make a weak spot and more than likely if the rod fails that is where it'll fail at. Well I've, I've done that so many times that I guess like a lot of people have built rods for a long time I no longer have to do that I just kind of know where it's at and this one's the same I kind of know where it's at and I've already put it on and it's bait casting rod so it's going to have more guides than spinning rod and there you see I've made my my final wrap with my final pass with my right thread a lot easier So now I want to show you how to terminate the thread. I'm going to have to move the camera around a little bit to do that and kind of work around it because the camera's on a stand. So let me see what I can do to show you how to terminate the thread. Well, that's about as close as I can get it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just use a piece of thread, or actually I use a piece of uh, braided fishing line but I wrap my my wraps a little tighter than most and many times the thread will break while I'm pulling my thread through. So I use braided line so it doesn't break. So I'm just going to pull a loop in there and then pass it around several times. Typically five is plenty. I don't even count them anymore. I just make a bunch of passes. And then I'm going to 
hold the thread and cut it and put it, pull it through that loop. But I'm going to first get my burnishing tool in there, slide it, and get it kind of down where I want it. Put my thumb on it right here. Give me a little slack in my string. And the slack is so that it doesn't um, fray out as badly where I cut it. And then I'm going to drop the thread through the loop. And pull the loop. And you see it. It pulls a line right there underneath the wrap. Now, if I was on something where I didn't want the tag end showing, I would cut it fairly close at this point so that it won't pull out of the back of the wrap. But here it doesn't matter. This is all going away and you can see there it is. And I'll cut off that tag end. And I've just effectively terminated the thread on that wrap. So uh, give me just a minute to get the camera off of its base and I'll show you the diamonds just in the layout they're still yet kind of rough okay my diamonds are shaping up they're nice and straight shape uh, equal distance apart and um, they're not just perfect yet but as I add wraps around it on both sides this area will continue to tighten up so this is just what we're starting and I'm not certain I like the red band um, I've not used one of those before but we'll see we'll see how it works out anyway uh, before I start with my next group of threads I want to build this tape up a little bit more around there just to have something to tape to or something for the line to jump over and, and hold everything so uh, that's it and I'm going to use a uh, metallic green next just it's not like green is my favorite color but it seems to give a nice look on a fishing rod with that particular metallic green Well, after looking it all over a second time, just to be sure, I'm getting ready to make my first pass up and down the blank with my metallic green thread. And I'm going to follow the same pattern. I'm going to start on the butt side of the diamond first. And each pass up and down will go on the opposite side of the diamond. So this one is on the butt side. The next one will be on the tip side. Being as my rod wrapper allows me to stop at any point and straighten up the thread, I do so often.
want to get up here on the tip side across the tape and then again make two or three wraps and then go back and that tape is what's holding everything still even though it's not actually taped down to the thread And when I was younger, I would try to force this to go a little faster. I'd go two or three threads and then come back and try to straighten them out. But I never really got good results at that. And if you do get good results at that, well, that's, that's good for you. I just couldn't. And so I just kind of take my time and straighten it as I go. And each new band holds the previous band in place. Each new band of thread. So this trip is holding the last white band in place. And then the next pass will hold this metallic green band in place. But once I get done with this one, this up and down on both sides of the diamond, you'll see the diamond begin to take shape rather well. And I'm just in no hurry to get this done. I, I want it to be right. And uh, putting the, the decorative wrap on on a custom rod, I don't know. You don't have to do it. <clears throat> I, I'm just of the impression that a custom rod needs to look like a custom rod. Well, thinking that a custom rod needs to look like a custom rod doesn't mean that you have to do something incredibly fancy. I mean, you may just weave the, the recipient's name on the rod blank. Or you might just use brighter colors and such on your guides. But... I just think a custom rod should look like a custom rod and I generally do something some of them are more labor intensive than others um, this one is, is for myself and I don't know if I said earlier but uh, I've got someone else asking me to make them a rod and this rod is a CRC blank, which I've never used before. Um, I've had it for a year or two, I don't know. Um, somewhere along the line, I received a, an advertisement on their, from them on their blanks and would I use it. And I don't remember what it was or where it come from but anyway <clears throat> I made a minimum order now being as I have a wholesale license a minimum order for me is not the same as a minimum order for the hobbyist you can buy just one rod and I don't know it seems like I bought 10 rods and if I look over there in the stack there's there's probably 10 of these not all this blank, but 10 different CRC blanks over there. 
but I went through the back surgery and it was just a physically a difficult time for me and I I just hadn't made a rod until the one I did last summer on crappie.com <clears throat> so um, someone's asking me about uh, a rod blank and I have these and they're the right length and on paper they're the right action but now rod blanks aren't always exactly in real life what they are on paper so before I would sell uh, make one to, for someone else I have to make one for myself to be sure I'm going to be happy with it and uh, and I will be whether the rod is is uh, stiffer or more limber than I had anticipated I can just use it for a different species of fish or do something else with it um, but I'm sure it'll be a good rod but this is to be sure that the next one I make is exactly the action I'm looking for because it is for a friend of mine's boss and if I made him a rod and <clears throat> it wasn't just exactly what he was wanting it wouldn't reflect well on my friend And his boss had never had a custom fishing rod before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I did take the both of them fishing just before deer season in the fall last year. And uh, they didn't bring any equipment. <clears throat> they, they just used my stuff. And he was just greatly impressed with the rods and he wanted to buy one right then <clears throat> but I wouldn't sell him one and this one won't be sold it'll be a gift